a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Brett Favre Brett Lorenzo Favre is a former American football quarterback who spent the majority of his career with the Green Bay Packers of the National Football League. He was a 20-year veteran of the NFL. Having played quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons in 1991, Packers from 1992 to 2007, New York Jets in 2008, and Minnesota Vikings from 2009 to 2010. Favre was the first NFL quarterback to pass for 500 touchdowns, throw for 70,000 yards, complete 6,000 passes, and attempt 10,000 passes. A graduate of the University of Southern Mississippi, Favre played college football for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles for four years, setting many school records. He was selected in the second round of the 1991 NFL Draft by the Falcons, with whom he spent one season as a backup before being traded to Green Bay for the Packers' first-round pick in the 1992 NFL Draft. Favre became the Packers' starting quarterback in the fourth game of the 1992 NFL season, and started every game through the 2007 season. He played for the Packers for 16 years before being traded to the Jets for the 2008 season and spending his final two seasons with the Vikings. In that time, he made an NFL record 297 consecutive starts, 321 including the playoffs. Favors' 11 Pro Bowl invitations is the third most among quarterbacks in NFL history. He is the only player to win the Associated Press NFL Most Valuable Player Award three consecutive times, doing so from 1995 to 1997, and is one of only six quarterbacks to have won the award as well as the Super Bowl in the same season. He led teams to eight division championships, five NFC championship games, and two Super Bowl appearances, Super Bowl 31 and Super Bowl 32. He and the Packers won Super Bowl 31 over the New England Patriots. Favre holds many NFL records, including most career pass completions, most career pass attempts, most career interceptions thrown, most consecutive starts by a player, most times sacked, and most fumbles. At the time of his retirement, he was the NFL's all-time leader in passing yards, passing touchdowns and quarterback wins. All three records have since been broken by Peyton Manning and Tom Brady respectively. Favre was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2016. Early Life Brett Favre was born in Gulfport, Mississippi, the son of Bonita Ann and Irvin Ernest Favre, and raised in the small town of Kiln. Both of his parents were school teachers in the Hancock County School District. He is of part French ancestry. One of his ancestors is Simon Favre, a Creole, was an influential figure in Spanish West Florida in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Brett descends from Simon's Choctaw Native American mistress, Pistakia Kone, and thus his grandfather was affiliated with the Choctaw. Brett was the second of four children and attended Hancock North Central High School, where he played baseball and football. Favre started for the Hancock North Central baseball team as an 8th grader and earned five varsity letters. He played quarterback, lineman, strong safety, place kicker, and punter in a primarily option, run-oriented offense coached by his father, Irvin Favre, who was the head coach of the Hawks football team. Irvin Favre said he knew his son had a great arm, but also knew that the school was blessed with good running backs. As a result, in the three years Brett was on the team, his father ran the wishbone, a run-oriented offense. Favre rarely threw more than five passes in a game. Southern Mississippi assistant coach Mark McHale, who was scouting new football recruits for the school, watched Favre play during a Hancock North Central football game after receiving recommendation from many nearby coaches. McHale, observing Favre mostly hand the ball off in running plays in the two games he watched, was set on leaving when he suddenly saw Favre through the ball in such a captivating way that he later described it by saying the ball had smoke and flames coming off it. College career After high school, Southern Mississippi offered Favre a football scholarship at the urging of assistant coach McHale, which was the only one he received. Southern Miss wanted him to play defensive back, but Favre wanted to play quarterback instead. 
Favre began his freshman year as the seventh-string quarterback and took over the starting position in the second half of the third game of the year against Tulane on September 19, 1987. Favre, despite suffering a hangover from the night before and vomiting during warm-ups, led the Golden Eagles to a come-from-behind victory with two touchdown passes. Favre started ten games during his freshman year and won six of them in his junior season. Favre led the Golden Eagles to an upset of Florida State on September 2, 1989. Favre capped a six-and-a-half-minute drive with the game-winning touchdown pass with 23 seconds remaining. On July 14, 1990, before the start of Favre's senior year at Southern Miss, he was involved in a near-fatal car accident. When going around a bend a few tenths of a mile from his parents' house, Favre lost control of his car which flipped three times and came to rest against a tree. It was only after one of his brothers smashed a car window with a golf club that Favre could be evacuated and rushed to the hospital. In the ambulance, his mother was sitting with him. All I kept asking her was will I be able to play football again? Favre recalled later. Doctors would later remove 30 inches of Favre's small intestine. Six weeks after this incident, on September 8th, Favre led Southern Miss to a comeback victory over Alabama. Alabama coach Gene Stallings said, You can call it a miracle or a legend or whatever you want to. I just know that on that day, Brett Favre was larger than life. Favre formally held several Southern Miss football records until most were surpassed by Austin Davis by the end of the 2011 season. Favre had 15 games over his career where he compiled more than 200 passing yards making him fourth in school history on the all-time list in that category. Of those 15 games, five were 300-yard games, the most compiled by any of the school's quarterbacks. Additionally, he was the seasonal leader in total passing and total offense in all four of his seasons at Southern Mississippi. Atlanta Falcons, 1991 Favre was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons in the second round with the 33rd overall pick in the 1991 NFL Draft. On July 19, 1991, Favre agreed to a three-year, $1.4 million US dollar contract with a reported signing bonus of $350,000. Atlanta head coach Jerry Glanville did not approve of the drafting of Favre, saying it would take a plane crash for him to put Favre into the game. Favors' first pass in an NFL regular season game resulted in an interception return for a touchdown in a game against the Washington Redskins. He only attempted four passes in his career at Atlanta, was intercepted twice, and completed none of them. Favre took one other snap, which resulted in a sack for an 11-yard loss. Green Bay Packers, 1992-2007 Green Bay Packers general manager Ron Wolf traded a first-round pick for Favre after the 1991 season. Wolf, while an assistant to the general manager of the New York Jets, had intended to take Favre in the 1991 NFL draft, but Favre was taken by the Falcons on the previous pick. According to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel and other sources, during the physical after the trade, Favre was diagnosed with avascular necrosis of the hip the same degenerative condition that ended running back Bo Jackson's football career, and doctors recommended his physical be failed, which would nullify the trade. Wolf overruled them. Favre played 16 seasons in Green Bay. During his time with the Packers, Favre was the first and only NFL player to win three consecutive AP MVP awards. He helped the Packers appear in two Super Bowls, winning Super Bowl 31 and losing Super Bowl 32. Favre started every Packers game from September 20, 1992 to January 20, 2008, a streak of 253 games. The record would continue after he left the Packers, reaching 297 games in the regular season. This remains the all-time record for consecutive starts in the NFL. Beginnings, 1992-94 in the second game of the 1992 season, the Packers played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers were leading 17-0 at halftime when head coach Mike Holmgren benched starting quarterback Don Majkowski, and Favre played the second half. On his first regular season play as a Packer, 
Favre threw a pass that was deflected by Buccaneers player Ray Seals and caught by Favre. Favre was tackled, and the completion went for minus seven yards. The Packers lost the game 31-3, chalking up only 106 yards passing. In the third game of the 1992 season, Majkowski injured a ligament in his ankle against the Cincinnati Bengals, an injury severe enough that he would be out for four weeks. Favre replaced Majkowski for the remainder of the game. Favre fumbled four times during the course of the game. A performance poor enough that the crowd chanted for Favre to be removed in favor of another Packers backup quarterback at the time, Ty Detmer. However, down 23-17 with 1.07 left in the game. The Packers started an offensive series on their own 8-yard line. Favre then completed a 42-yard pass to wide receiver Sterling Sharp. Three plays later, Favre threw the game-winning touchdown pass to wide receiver Kittrick Taylor with 13 seconds remaining. The next week's game against the Pittsburgh Steelers began the longest consecutive start streak for a quarterback in NFL history. The game ended in a 17-3 victory and his passer rating was 144.6. During the season, Favre helped put together a six-game winning streak for the Packers, the longest winning streak for the club since 1965. They ended 9-7 that season, missing the playoffs on their last game. Favre finished his first season as a Packer with 3,227 yards and a quarterback rating of 85.3, helping him to his first Pro Bowl. The following season, Favre helped the Packers to their first playoff berth since 1982, and was named to his second Pro Bowl. Favre had his first career 400-yard passing game and led the NFC in pass attempts, pass completions, and pass interceptions. Favre also had four game-winning drives giving him seven for his career up to that point. After the season, Favre became a free agent. General manager Ron Wolf negotiated Favre into a five-year, $19 million contract. The Packers finished the 1994 season with a 9-7 record, advancing to the playoffs in back-to-back -back years, a feat they had not accomplished since the Vince Lombardi era. For the first time in his career, he was not eligible for the Pro Bowl. MVP, X3, and Super Bowl seasons, 1995-97 In 1995, Favre won the first of his three AP MVP awards. Favre led the Packers to an 11-5 record, Green Bay's best record in nearly 30 years. Favre passed for a career high of 4,413 yards, 38 touchdowns, and recorded a quarterback rating of 99.5, which was the highest of his career until he recorded a rating of 107.2 during the 2009 season. Favre also tied an NFL record by passing for at least two touchdowns in 12 consecutive games, a feat he accomplished over the 1994-1995 seasons. The Packers advanced to the NFC Championship game after upsetting the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Divisional game. The Packers lost the NFC Championship game to the Dallas Cowboys. Marking the third year in a row the Packers' season was ended by the Cowboys in the playoffs. Favre helped the Packers advance farther in the playoffs than any other Packer team since 1967, which was the season the Packers last won the championship in Super Bowl II. While being treated for various injuries, Favre developed an addiction to Vicodin, which became publicly known when he suffered a seizure during a hospital visit. Amid an NFL investigation, he went public to avoid any rumors about his condition. In May 1996, he went into treatment and remained in rehabilitation for 46 days. Had he chosen not to go, the NFL would have imposed a $900,000 fine. Favre led the Packers to their best season in 30 years in the 1996 season, winning his second consecutive MVP award in the process. The Packers led the NFL in points scored as well as fewest points allowed, joining only the 1972 Dolphins as the only two teams to ever accomplish this. The defense also set an NFL record for least amount of touchdowns allowed in a 16-game season with 19. Favre threw for 3,899 yards, 
a career-high 39 touchdown passes, only 13 interceptions, and passer rating of 95.8. Green Bay tied the Denver Broncos for the NFL's best regular season record, 13-3, defeated the San Francisco 49ers and Carolina Panthers at Lambeau Field in the playoffs. The Packers advanced to Super Bowl 31 at the Louisiana Superdome, a short drive from Favre's hometown. In Super Bowl 31, Favre completed 14 of 27 passes for 246 yards and two touchdown passes. On the second play of the game, Favre called an audible and threw a 54-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Andre Risen. In addition, Favre completed an 81-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Antonio Freeman in the second quarter. Favre rushed for 12 yards and another touchdown, as the Packers won Super Bowl 31 over the New England Patriots, 35-21. In their 19 games of the season, the Packers had a turnover ratio of plus 24, and outscored their opponents 148 in the playoffs. Favre became the first and only quarterback to score three touchdowns in the Super Bowl, and failed to win MVP honors. Favre and the Packers continued their dominance of the NFC during the next season. Favre was named AP co-MVP of the league along with Detroit Lions running back Barry Sanders. His third straight award. He finished the season with 3,867 passing yards, 35 touchdown passes, 16 interceptions, and a passer rating of 92.6. The Packers finished with a 13-3 record and became the only team to ever defeat six teams that would go on to make the playoffs. Also, Green Bay advanced through the playoffs to the Super Bowl for the second year in a row. After being heavily favored by 11 points, the Packers lost to the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 32 by the score of 31-24 at Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego, ending the NFC's 13-year Super Bowl winning streak. Denver defeating Green Bay was one of the biggest upsets in NFL history. Favre completed 25 of 42 passes for 256 yards and three touchdowns, with one interception and one fumble in the losing effort. Super Bowl 32 was Favre's last appearance in a Super Bowl in his career. Mid-career, 1-9-8, 2-0-2. The Packers lost to the San Francisco 49ers in a wild-card round playoff game in 1998. Favre had rallied the team with a touchdown pass to wide receiver Antonio Freeman with 1.56 remaining in the game to put the Packers up 27-23. However, Steve Young responded with a touchdown of his own to wide receiver Terrell Owens with three seconds remaining to end the Packers' season. Favre and the Packers failed for the first time since 1994 to at least reach the NFC Championship. In the regular season finale of 2001, Favre was the target of minor controversy when, in a game against the New York Giants at Giants Stadium, he was sacked by the Giants defensive end Michael Strahan. It was Strahan's lone sack of the game and gave him the NFL's single-season sack record of 22.5 which topped Mark Gastino's record of 22 set in 1984. The controversy has followed Strahan continuously since he set the record. Jim Fassel, Strahan's coach in 2001, said that when a respected athlete like Strahan gets close to an all-time record, sometimes opponents want him to break it. On March 1, 2001, Favre signed a lifetime contract extension which technically was a 10-year contract extension worth around $100 million. Favre and the Packers continued posting positive results through the next few seasons, through the 2004 season. The Packers had the longest streak of non-losing seasons in the NFL, despite an 8-8 record under head coach Ray Rhodes, a 9-7 season under head coach Mike Sherman, and no playoff berths in either 1999 or 2000. The streak ended in 2005, with the Packers finishing with a 4-12 record. Later career and personal tragedies, 2003-2006. One day after his father died of a heart attack or stroke, Favre decided to play in a December 22, 2003, Monday night football game against the Oakland Raiders. 
The Packers traveled to Oakland where Favre passed for four touchdowns in the first half and 399 total yards in a 41-7 victory over the Raiders on international television. He completed 73.3% of his passes and finished the game with a passer rating of 154.9 with having recorded a perfect 158.3 rating with four touchdowns and over 250 yards passing by halftime. Afterwards, Favre said, I knew that my dad would have wanted me to play. I love him so much and I love this game. It's meant a great deal to me, to my dad, to my family, and I didn't expect this kind of performance. But I know he was watching tonight. After the game, he went to his father's funeral in Pass Christian, Mississippi. Favre won an Aspire Award for his Monday night football performance. A notable game in the 2004 season in which Favre and the Packers finished 10-6 was against the New York Giants. During the game, Favre suffered a concussion. He did not receive medical clearance to re-enter the game. Despite the concussion, Favre threw a 28-yard touchdown to Javon Walker on a fourth down play. Afterwards it was reported that Favre did not remember throwing the touchdown pass. Favre also had two significant touchdown streaks of note during the season. He had completed at least one touchdown pass in 36 consecutive games over the 2002-2004 seasons which at the time was the second longest streak in NFL history. Also, during the 2004 postseason, he broke Dan Marino's record for consecutive games with at least one touchdown pass in the postseason. After the death of his father, a series of events related to Favors' family were reported in the media. In October 2004, ten months after the death of Favors' father, his brother-in-law, Casey Tynes, was killed in an all-terrain vehicle accident on Favors' Mississippi property. Soon after in 2004, Favors' wife, Deanna Favre, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Following aggressive treatment through 2004, she recovered. She created the Diana Favre Hope Foundation which supports breast cancer education and women's breast imaging and diagnosis services for all women, including those who are medically underserved. In late August 2005, Favors' family suffered another setback. Hurricane Katrina blew through Mississippi, destroying his family's home there. However, none of his family members were injured. Brett and Diana's property in Hattiesburg, Mississippi was also extensively damaged by the storm. Favre elected to continue to play in the 2005 season. For the 2005 season, the Packers, despite throwing for over 3,000 yards for a record 14th consecutive time, Favre had a below-average season with only 20 touchdown passes and a league-leading 29 interceptions. The loss of guards Marco Rivera and Mike Wall to free agency along with key injuries to Javon Walker, Aman Green, Bubba Franks, among others, hampered Favre and the team. His passer rating was 70.9, 31st in the NFL and the worst single-season rating of his career. After the disappointing season, many speculated that Favre would retire. However, on April 26, 2006, Favre announced that he would remain with the team for the 2006 season. Despite earlier comments that the 2006 season would be his last, Favre announced in a press conference on May 6, 2006, that he had not ruled out the possibility of returning beyond the 2006 season. In the 2006 season, Favre suffered his first career shutout against the Chicago Bears. Later in the season, the New England Patriots shut out the Packers in a game where he was injured before halftime and could not complete the game. On September 24, 2006, he became just the second quarterback in NFL history to record 400 touchdown passes. He connected with rookie wide receiver Greg Jennings on a five-yard pass that Jennings turned into a 75-yard touchdown play during a win against the Detroit Lions. He also became the first player ever to complete 5,000 passes in his career. On December 31, 2006, the Packers played their last game of the season, winning 26-7 in the second game against the Chicago Bears. It was his 22nd career win versus the Bears moving him to an all-time record of 22-8. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries
Would you like to know more?